Good day, everyone, and here we are on the Bible in a Year 2021, day 47. And um, I know some of you have uh, just joined with, with day one recently, so you're not going to hear this until like 47 days later, but uh, a number of new people have joined in, and I appreciate you so much for joining us and joining us on this, uh, on this journey. And uh, I hope you have made it to day 47. And if you are, have, then congratulations on, on getting this far. We're uh, doing Leviticus. Leviticus chapters 11 to 13. And it becomes more and more evident that this is definitely a handbook for the priests, especially as we read through today. We're not going to go into uh, very much today um, at all. Um, just to point out some things here and and i mean all of leviticus 11 is dealing with the dietary laws and the one thing that we can um, come away from this um is is an appreciation um (laughs) set aside the fact that it can be monotonous and boring um if you don't understand the implications of what's being said here Uh, but it tells us very much that that Yahweh cares for those who belong to him. He very much cares for those who belong to him. Uh, He goes to to great measures to protect us. It's so important that we just trust him, that we trust what he's telling us. We may not understand it. Uh, These instructions that he was given, there's no way that that, uh, the people Israel could understand here they don't have the capacity to understand that these type of animals that are being set aside, that are being on the um, do not eat list here, uh, they they are ones, a lot of them are scavengers. Um, they're eating off of dead carcasses. There's all kinds of disease that they, they carry. And if you don't know how to cook those type of animals properly, you, you're going to get sick. Yeah, uh, you all kinds of different diseases you could have. Um, you could end up uh, a plague. Um, you know, we kind of have experience with that these days. Uh, you know, it's it's a virus that's sitting on that thing and it spreads. Yahweh understands the fallen nature of of his creation. He knows what's going on. He understands decay. He wants nothing to do with the fermentation process on the altar, right? So he, he's understanding decay. He's understanding disease. He understands the um, microbiology, if you want. He, he, he knows the hidden things, the unseen things that we can't see. And I mean, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of years later that our science will be at a point where we can understand these things. But uh, you know, the Israelites can't understand. So he's protecting them. He's putting them on this. And it's not for them to say, hey, well, you know, I'm curious about, you know, what that kind of animal tastes like. He said, no. He said, no. And there's a reason he said, no, just trust about that. You can't understand. There's all kinds of uh, uh, invisible things in, in that meat, in that animal um, that will kill you. You can't understand that. Um, and you're not at a level where I can explain it. So just don't do it. It's this relationship of trust that they have to have. It's the relationship we have to have because, I mean, how many things have yet to be discovered about this this creation, especially the fallen nature of creation? Things have been designed to work a certain way, but they're not working that way because we blew it, because we caused it to fall apart. And, and man, we just have to trust whatever the Lord is telling us. Um, you know, it's the same thing with the 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 not touching laws and the, the contaminated container laws. Um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, you have a dead mouse that falls into your cont- container, get rid of it. You have no idea why that rodent just died. Uh, did it die of old age? Did it desi- die of uh, some plague disease? I just get rid of that thing. We understand a lot more today. We can look back and say, oh, yeah, but what are the things that we don't understand that Yahweh has still told us not to do? Told us not to do it because there's natural consequences. These are not things that he caused. He didn't cause these disease. These diseases are just an existence, and he's trying to protect his people from it. Look look how uh, specific this is uh, in verses 37 and 38. Have any part of these animals' dead bodies 
falls on seed any parts you know if if it's decayed and that arm falls off and, and lands in the seed you know that is to be the, uh, the seed that is to be planted not the seed that you're going to cook with but the seed to be planted the seed is still clean as long as you're not cooking with it as long as you're going to plant it but if water is poured on some seed and part of the dead bodies falls on it it is unclean for you there's scientific reason behind this, okay? They don't understand that, but this is a rule to be followed. It's very, very specific. And that's why it can be boring to us because um, it, it, we, we don't live with this day to day anymore. We, we have cleaning products, we have, um, we have packaging uh, for animals not to get into. If we, if we find a most whole eaten in something, we throw that thing out. You know, uh, we have all the medicine, everything else to protect us. They didn't have it back then, obviously. So it, then we go into Leviticus. Let's just, the only thing from Levitic, Leviticus 12 too, okay, is this that I want to point out. Um, it, it just seems like, you know, unclean. It, it sounds like such a harsh term. In, in verse to say to the Israelites, if a woman conceives a child and gives birth to a son, she will be unclean for seven days, um, just as she is during her, her menstrual period. There's, there's got to understand, they don't have all the stuff that we have to clean up after blood. Okay, they, they don't have it. But disease only lasts for so long. Viruses only last for so long on the surface. Seven days. And now I have no idea. Um, somebody could explain this, I guess. <clears throat> but there's, you know, for for sons it's seven days, for daughters it's it's fourteen days. <laughs> don't ask me. Uh, I don't know, um, and I don't have the time to look. Uh, if you get the time, you you can look it up right now. But I, I'm just pointing out here uh, that they didn't uh, like life is in the blood, but diseases are in the blood too, and, and so. Um, you know, this is precautionary. It's is this is not to say, oh, you know, you're you're unclean. Uh, we want nothing to do with you. Uh, you shouldn't have given birth. If you didn't give birth, everything would be okay. So we're just going to call you nasty names. Has nothing. This is just standard. This is normal. Some people today might like that. You know, you give birth, especially if you're in a large family. Oh, you got to be set aside. You can't look after the other kids. You know, you're seven days. Just <clears throat> rest. Look after that baby. You and the, so you and the baby time. Okay, seven days. Um, so yeah, it's not punishment. It's disease prevention. That's what it is. It's just like washing hands today. Um, and they didn't. I gotta emphasize this. They didn't have our powerful cleaning products that, that we have today. So we can't judge this according to where we are today. You gotta understand Yahweh is is wanting to protect his people he said be holy as i am holy and part of that is is being clean and without without disease that's what he wants his people where he wants them to be and then just leviticus um, 13 we're just going to look at a couple of verses in this but um you know we can identify this is this is more so this year than in previous years we can identify with these poor people who had to go into quarantine we understand that we understand what it is um suddenly to be sick and you you have to go into quarantine uh, you, you lock away locked away from the rest of the family uh, there's a designated room in the house that that's where you're going to live everybody has to clean up after you if you need to come out of the house you're supposed to have a dedicated washroom we understand this we may not like it but even at this time, it was an effective way of preventing the spreading of disease. And that's the whole thing about quarantine. It has no other magic powers whatsoever. It's those who are sick must be set aside for the protection of community. And I'll tell you, part of the reason we struggle, especially in North America, is because we put the rights of individuals above the importance of community. There was a time that we understood that we laid down our lives for the sake of the community. We worked for the sake of the community. 
in, in small towns. The doctor was there and it wasn't because that town could pay him more, but he was the only doctor or she was the only doctor. And, and um, they were important to that community. The, 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 the um, spiritual guide, the, 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 the pastor or the priest or whoever it was in that community was important because that, that was the, the one who would teach them to pray how to seek God, um, would be there to, for, for counseling, for help, for encouragement, uh, for all those sort of things. The banker was important, the, the baker, the candlestick maker, like the, it was all important. The blacksmith, man, that was vital. And all these people made a stronger community. We had that understanding, you know, so nobody would ever want to get the blacksmith sick. If, if, if you were sick, man, you stayed home, you protected everybody else. You didn't spread that thing. But now we, we treat it like, a, uh, I, I don't know, uh, the, the person's right to go to school is more important um, than protecting everybody else. Uh, your right to go to work is more important than everybody else. Your, your right to gather is more important than everybody else. And, and so we have lost a sense of community which is crazy. We as a church, and, and when I say, no, I'm not even going to mention, okay, I'm not going to talk about that, but just we as a church should understand this, but we don't. And that's why we have so many problems in the church. That's why, um, that's why people don't understand why things are dealt with in a certain way to protect that, that community of believers. Um, they don't understand how important that Bible uh, teachers, they don't understand how important the, the worship leader is. They don't understand how important the, the greeter at the door is. They don't, under, they don't understand each of these. They don't understand the person who has that anointing for, for um, you know, intercession. The person has that anointing for, for healing and, and all these things and how important it all fits together. We, we, we are here to protect each other and to help each other. And somebody, if somebody's sick, you know, disease prevention. Yeah, we've, we've got prayer. We, we know we're covered. Um, but we also need to do the practical stuff, people. The practical stuff. And that's what this is all about. It, 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 was, it wasn't mean. Um, and it, it wasn't a matter of calling out individuals. It, it was an important measure in preventing anything from spreading in this very large mobile population. You know, it, yeah, it'd be embarrassing to walk through the, through the streets saying unclean, unclean. But it was, it was a warning. If you couldn't stay home, if you had to go to the pharmacist, if you had to go to the grocery store, the market, the whatever, um, you, you had to go from A, A to B for whatever reason. You had to get to see the doctor because the doctor couldn't come to see you. Um, you had to warn people you're not well, not well. It, it, and it, it was something that you were glad to do. It wasn't a matter of shame. It became shame, but it shouldn't have been shame. So the instruction, instructions to the priests um, here are very clear and they're very detailed so that there wouldn't be any confusion on this. And just the, the couple of verses here. Um, listen, this was harsh, but it wasn't mean. There's a difference. It was harsh, but it wasn't mean. It had to be harsh. Anyone with an infection of skin disease must wear torn clothes, this evil their hair, cover their upper lip, and shout out, unclean unclean they will be unclean as long as they are infected they are unclean they must live alone outside the camp this was for the sake of the rest of the community if you were sick you had to look the part today we mask it today uh, we take drugs to, to hide the symptoms. It doesn't cure the disease. It hides the symptoms. Uh, you know, we make sure we're well presentable and, and we go and we're spreading those germs everywhere because uh, for us, productivity is more important. Um, that paycheck is more important. Even though we have sick days, uh, we have sick leave, we have all this sort of stuff, doesn't matter. Um, we don't want to be the slackered. We don't want to be the one um, who misses out on work because we're sick. And meanwhile, we're affecting the, the company or the office because we're bringing it into the office. So, yeah, it kind of relates, doesn't it? And uh, 
God loves you. He loves you. So if you're sick, stay home and pray for healing. Get people to pray for your healing. But come on. We, we know better than, than, than to go out and about and, and say, well, I have faith. You have faith, but what about the people that you're infecting that don't have faith? Hmm? Okay, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, that's, uh, that's definitely, if you guys are looking back at this a number of years down the road, um, I don't know if it'll be a stick that'll be around still 20 years. Maybe my kids are look at, listen back on this reminiscing. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's very pertinent to 2021, isn't it? Understanding quarantine and isolation. Okay, you guys be blessed. Um, know that our father is absolutely occupied with us. And um, he, uh, he gives us instructions sometimes that may seem a bit bizarre, uh, but they're to protect us. Uh, he may tell you to turn left when you want to turn right, if you have that kind of sensitivity. If he's telling you to do it, do it for a reason, because you don't know what's around that corner. Okay, have a great day, guys. Glad you're with us on this journey. Be blessed, be encouraged, and press in to hear the Lord.